what is the tech stack like today, particularly for data science at the New York Times? It's good. Compared, compared, to what was there, compared to what was there when I started. So when I started, um, if you wanted to make sense of data, you needed to, to write your own MapReduce jobs hits, hitting buckets of unstructured JSON in S3. Uh, and then eventually we moved to, you could start writing jobs in Hive or Pig. Good luck. And then eventually it was decided that the right way to do that was to start our own Hadoop instance on-prem and... Uh, that was a bad time. <laughs> and then um, I, I was not, a f I can't speak to why that decision was made, but eventually all those machines were dropped into the Hudson River and <laughs> we eventually gave all of our data engineering, not of all, most of our data engineering problems to um, BigQuery, which means that the MapReduce is still happening. It's just now that's Google's problem. And we went from jobs that would fail silently to fast, reliable SQL, SQL, um, SQL right? And fast, fast, reliable access to a relational database was really transformative. All the data analysts became much less grumpy. And um, that, so that tech stack is something that we've built on top of a lot, basically the GCP, the Google Cloud Platform tech stack. So at this point, data scientists are coding in Python, leveraging heavily scikit-learn, as well as other open source tools. When necessary, data scientists are coding in Go, the data we use are largely data that's um, read from uh, BigQuery, and a lot of our out model output is pushing back to BigQuery so that anal analysts or future data scientists can put those relational databases to work. Sometimes we're hosting an API if there's something that needs to be more performant. Um, things are scheduled using Airflow, an Airflow instance that's also part of GCP, um, appropriately containerized, and um, yeah, and basically it's on top of the, the GCP stack. Uh, 